OK, so we're going to prove that if you have 10 consecutive integers, there's always going to be at least one of them which is co-prime to the other integers. So there's at least one integer which doesn't have any common factors with the other nine integers in your list, other than one. And the first step towards solving this problem is to notice that if we've got 10 consecutive integers, they're all very close to each other. And this actually really limits what any common factors could possibly be. So for example, if we look for a common factor of 10, then two of our numbers would have to be in the 10 times table. We'd have to two, have two multiples of 10. So we'd have 10 and 20, 20 and 30, 30 and 40, or something like this. However, if we actually look at having 10 consecutive integers, the best we could do would be, for example, 10 up to 19, and this is 10 consecutive integers. So we've included 10, but we've missed 20. And if you want to include 20, you go from 11 up to 20, and we've lost 10. So you can see it's not actually possible to have two multiples of 10 in a list of 10 consecutive integers. And similarly, if we wanted two multiples of 11, these are even further apart. So actually, it's not possible to have two multiples of 11 either in a list of 10 consecutive integers, because they're just too far apart. So then we can say the same for 12, 13, 14, 15. Actually, any number greater than or equal to 10, we can say we can't have that as a common factor, because the multiples of that number are just too far apart for our list of 10 consecutive integers. So we can conclude then, as our first step towards this proof, is that any common factors that we do have, so any common factors have to be less than or equal to 9. So we can't have a common factor of 10 or above because our 10 consecutive integers are too close to each other. However, we could have a common factor of 9, for example, so we could go from 9 up to 18 for our 10 consecutive integers. So this now really restricts us, and we'll have a look at a pigeonhole principle kind of argument now to show that there's always going to be one of these integers which doesn't have any common factors with the others other than one. And now to find such an integer, we can first of all notice that it's not going to be an even number, because we've got lots of even numbers in our list of 10 consecutive integers, and they've all got a common factor of 2 with the other even numbers. So we only really need to consider the odd numbers in our list. So if we just now write out some odd numbers, we've got 10 consecutive integers, which means that within this, we're going to have five consecutive odd integers. And now we can start to think carefully about what our common factors could be. So what could these be in terms of, could we have multiples of three, and how many multiples of three could we have? So if we look at our multiples of three, we've got three, nine, 15, the next one would be 21. You can see it's possible to have within five consecutive odd numbers, we could have two multiples of three, or depending how we choose them, we could also have just the one multiple of three if it's our middle of the five odd numbers. So how many multiples of three can we have? We've got at most two. So multiples of three, we've got at most two multiples of three within our five consecutive odd numbers. And we'll do the same thing for multiples of five now. And we'll see that if we wanted to have two multiples of 5, the closest we can get is, for example, 5 and 15. But these are actually too far apart. So if we only have 10 consecutive integers, these are 10 apart. But the furthest apart we could be is 9 apart. And we only have 5 consecutive odd numbers. So we've got 5 to 13, or we could have 7 to 15. But you can't include both 5 and 15. So you can see here, actually, we're going to have at most one multiple of five. It's not possible to have two. And it turns out that actually you'll always have exactly one multiple of five because it's not possible to have zero multiples of five. So we've got exactly one multiple of five in our list of our five consecutive odd numbers. Then if we look for multiples of seven now, you'll see that seven, the next odd number after seven, which is a multiple of seven, would be 21, and these are 14 apart, so they're far too far apart so that we could have two odd multiples of 7. There just isn't enough space in our 10 consecutive integers for this. So our multiples of 7, then, we've only got 1, or we could also perhaps have 0. So we've got at most one multiple of 7. So now if we bring all of this together, we're going to extract some quite useful information about our odd numbers in this list of 10 consecutive integers. If we just picture our five consecutive odd numbers, 
we're saying that at most two of them can be multiples of three. So even if we assume that these are all different, there's at most one of them is a multiple of five, and this could actually also be a multiple of three. We've got at most one of them is a multiple of seven as well. So this means that there's another integer here, one of our odd numbers, which is, first of all, we know that it's odd, and it's not a multiple of three, it's not a multiple of five, and it's also not a multiple of seven. So we've got an integer which is odd, and it's not a multiple of three, five, or of seven. And now we're really restricted in terms of what the factors of this integer could actually be. So let's just imagine this integer has got a common factor with one of the other integers in our list. So let's look for a common factor. And if we just start a little list here of what our possible common factors could be, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But then remember, once we get up to 10 and above, we've seen earlier that because our integers are at most 9 apart, they can't have a common factor of 10 because they'd be too spread apart. And similarly for 11 and above. So actually, we can rule out all of these. So any possible common factor would have to be between 1 and 9. But focusing on this particular odd number, which isn't a multiple of 3, 5, or 7. So first of all, we know that it's odd, so it can't have 2, 4, 6, or 8 as one of its factors, because it's an odd number. So this certainly can't be a common factor between this and another integer in our list. And we've seen as well that it can't be a multiple of 3, 5, or 7. And because it's not a multiple of 3, this also implies that it's not going to be a multiple of 9. So if you have a multiple of 9, that would also be a multiple of 3. So you can see now we've completely run out of options. The only possible common factor that this odd number, which isn't a multiple of 3, 5, or 7, the only possible common factor that this could have with one of the other integers in our list is 1. So we can conclude then that this integer is co-prime to all of the other integers in our list. So it can't have any common factors greater than or equal to 10, We've seen that it can't actually have anything from 2 to 9 as one of its factors, never mind as a common factor. So we can show then that there is indeed one, or at least one, of our integers in our list of 10 consecutive integers, which is co-prime to all of the other integers in that list.